Oh, we're going to go to the next Sunday segment, Based versus Cringe 3. And the, if for those that don't know, Based versus Cringe 3 is people put in super hot takes and we evaluate the hot takes. We dis we discern if these hot takes are based or cringe. <laughs> All right, later spam. Feel free to post one. Uh, where did we leave off? I think it's right here. I should probably denote in the future. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think this is where we're at. All right. So we'll just go through them. And yes, you can do more than one. Just, you know. There's a there's a six hour. Uh time thing for a reason anyway base versus cringe three we got one from chlorobite aka ben aka just for those who need to know Maga monogamy for those who don't know is like i guess traditional marriage having one partner monogamy fucking sucks it adds lots of pressure and things to worry about only to get past a life achievement. We should just screw that shit and open ourselves up to be to loved wherever, whenever. Don't give an F about commitment to a one-on-one -on -one relationship. If you truly love somebody, let them enjoy life however they want. Don't lock them in with you. Why the fuck do you care if they receive love and care in the end? We would be a lot happier without all the nonsense worrying about cheating or whatever. Uh oh. Is Twitch fucking up as it does? <laughs> nah, you're good, Sylvia. Oh. Uh, hello? Yep. Bye, frames. Okay. Well, uh... I'll just trudge forward as I do. Hmm. Twitch, where'd you go? Mr. Twitch, why? Uh, anyway. For this one, I think it's kind of dependent. I don't know. So long as like you and your partner agree, that's what really matters. As for like monogamy in general, I don't know if it's what you but if it's what you both want, then like go for it. Like me and my wife are monogamous. And it's not really a and like for example, it's not so much that I want to lock Bella, my wife, to me. It's like, I don't think she wants to be with anyone but me. <laughs> and also, like, I would be worried. Like, if I were to get with somebody else, it would make Bella sad. And I don't want Bella to be sad. So I don't know. I agree for the most part. It's just, it depends on the relationship. If you do not want to have a monogamous relationship and just don't, I don't know. I did not deco. So, yeah. So I would say the take is based for the most part. Are we still dropping frames? What the fuck is going on? Oh, well. Just do your best, Mr. Twitch. We'll get through it. 
Okay, next one's from Luna, and this one, having read it beforehand, this one's gonna get... <laughs> Alright, Five Nights at Freddy's, and by extension, Scott Cawthon, as a developer, deserve a lot more respect as a franchise. FNAF 1 to Ultimate Custom Night, when you consider the place Scott Cawthon came from as a dev, being kid games for Christian audience, the games are really impressive in how they convey oppressive atmospheres. The thing I always respect about Scott is that when fans criticize how certain aspects were done, like in FNAF 3 jump scares, he went and made FNAF 4, which is truly super scary. He also made FNAF World, which he admitted was just him think thinking fans would eat anything, but when, but when people hated it, he apologized and came back swinging and learnt to not take the fan base for granted and made Sister Location, a game with a bit more budget. When it came to jump scares and proper voice acting and tried something of, of something very new. As for FNAF itself, I appreciate how much he changed the design each time for each game, having its own unique flair without straying too far from what makes FNAF FNAF until Security Breach. It also has a great sound design, such as Chica playing in the kitchen and knowing when she's there, or Foxy singing, which tells you he's not going to leave his stage. It's very impressive audio design and horror design. I feel like the series doesn't get praised enough. I can understand disagreeing with him politically, doesn't warrant harassment, I will say. But when it comes to a developer and how they run an IP and treat their fan base, I truly think Scott is one of the best. I've seen and respect a lot like Sam Lake, Alan Wake Control, and Kojima as developers who truly gives a shit. We need more in the industry in the sea of companies trying to milk their audiences like Bungie, Activision, etc. Uh... Yeah, sure. It's uh, nice to have, like, people care about their franchise and not just put them up to milk them forever. Uh... I find it weird you have FNAF as an example of not milking the franchise. High place. Since, you know, for a minute there, FNAF came out like every six months. But no, I get what, I get what they're saying. Personally, FNAF is a franchise I don't assign much artistry to. It's a series that I've, like, enjoyed here or there, but have fallen out of it. But, nah, like, if you respect them for, like, keeping in the good work and working on it. But, I don't know, if you respect them, then sure. Although, although... Not to get back to what what Luna is definitely referencing. Uh, <laughs> can you really give him an, a plus for treating his fans correctly when the FNAF series has a massive LGBT fan base and then he gives money to anti-LGBT, you know, organizations? Maybe this is just me, but I find the person who acts as your friend in front of you and then holds a knife to your back all the while is like the worst kind of person. Opposed to someone who, t who says they hate you and has a knife to your front. I just think it's better to know where people stand. <laughs> when someone tries to play both lanes, eh, you know? I don't like those people. <laughs> think of Freddy Transbear, honestly. Why does no one think of Freddy Transbear? But, eh, whatever. Like, I guess I don't pay much attention to the Freddy series. It just orbits around like, it's there. The games are fine. The movie was okay. See, there you go, Docs. Kudos to you.
Next one from Deco. Facebook slash Meta is nowhere near as bad as tracking network compared to Google. True for the most part. The only difference here, Deco, it's all about how you present it. Facebook and Meta have really, really bad, like, marketing, I guess. Or at the very least, they tell people they're doing it and Google doesn't tell people they do it. Google is better at just keeping that shit in the background. <laughs> now, is one worse than the other? Oh, yeah, definitely. Google does it way more. That's Google's whole thing. But Google knows to keep it secret. And Meta and Facebook were like, yeah, we're doing this and tell everybody about it, which was a dumb idea. <laughs> so, eh, I agree. Encryptus, AI voice cloning is perfectly fine. Uh, I don't know. It's a slippery slope. Like, it's fine when it's, like, for shit posts and funny shit like that. You're not joking when you say you've never seen a non-suggestive FNAF art piece. I mean, hey, that's the community. Like... <laughs> Shit posting is one thing, but the AI voice thing is such a slippery slope because it because you are taking people's voices, which are which is like their livelihood and their work without their permission. And you use it for stuff and then company can you companies can use it to replace people and not pay people. So I guess it does. It does depend on what you are doing. But the sad truth is, if it's being used for, like, creative and art benefits, shitty billion-dollar companies will use it to, like, as an excuse to not pay anyone and hoard more money. So it's one of those things where it can be used for good, but it will definitely be used for evil. So, I don't know. It's, it's hard. I can't agree with the take, personally. Yeah, but here's the thing, Deco. If the voice person gets paid to do it, if they like completely clone their voice, what happens like when they die? <laughs> we just never get a new actor? We just never pay a new person? What happens then? I don't know. You guys you just gotta let people die. Let it go. It's like the whole, like, using the AI Luke Skywalker thing, even though Mark Hamill is alive. Just, just recast him. Just make a new, just get a, just get a, get a new actor. If I die, then that's wrong with it. With it, if they made it rich. I don't know. That's also the thing, Deco. If someone fucking uploads their voice and says anyone can use their voice then like no one's hired and everyone just uses the one voice because they can use it for free or much cheaper it eliminates jobs in an acting like thing like for example pe people already use ai voices that sound fake as fuck instead of just fucking paying someone to do their voices Like, if it's just for, like, an art thing, then whatever. If it's just, like, for a project or for a shit post, go for it. But as soon as, like, companies start using fake AI voices instead of just, like, paying somebody to do it, then it's fucked up. So, I don't know. I can't agree, Encryptus, just because... It can be used innocently, but it's not going to. <laughs> it's just like the crypto thing and just like the NFT thing. Yes, it is nice in concept, but it's going to be used for fucked up shit. So don't do it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>
Like the whole non-transferable money thing is cool until people use it tr to traffic people, <laughs> and then it's not cool. <laughs> so like fine in concept, but you just gotta think about where it's gonna go eventually and who's gonna use it. But anyway, moving on. Scott Pilgrim comic thing from Dead End. Kim Pine should be bashed as much as Scott is. I think it's crazy how Scott is talked about for almost constantly when he's bringing up Knives Chow. As we know, he's 23, she's 17. Very bad, boo, bad Scott. But it's crazy how Kim kisses Knives while both are intoxicated, mind you, and practically gets away with it. Like almost nobody talks about it. Scott and Knives never ever kiss or anything. They only held hands and had that one awkward quiz when she turned 18. And nobody goes to bat an eye or anything when Kim, who is 22, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think the main difference here is that it was mainly used for comedy. And they were both intoxicated. And I think Knives is 18 at that point, I guess. So I understand what you mean. But I think there is a big difference in terms of intent between like both people are inebriated and they make out and like purposely like dating somebody. You know what, play Scott Pilgrim is a good is a good series. Watch it and or read it. Doesn't take up a lot of time. I can give it a pretty earnest recommendation. It's good. I understand what you mean, Dead End, but I don't know. I still think what Kim ends up doing is not as bad as Scott. Not great, but not as bad. Another one, it just irks you. Yeah, I know what you mean. I understand that. Thing in the same vein and gets off and, and gets off completely free, but Scott is always criticized. I understand that. But Kim's, Kim, Kim's isn't as bad. Still bad, but not as bad. But Docs, that requires effort. Where the other one requires no effort. You, 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 you gotta... You gotta... You gotta understand. People are lazy. Anyway, next one from Encryptus. Mario Kart Wii's animations feel more fluent than 8 Deluxe. Case in point, the blue shell. I can't think of the animations off the top of my head, but I'd probably say that's true. Especially since Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has now had like 10 years of active development, their animations could be spiffier. Um, so long as it goes for the general vibes that are also in the base Discord, I guess, place, go for it. So long as it doesn't, like, break any rules of the Discord, I'd say you're fine. Anyway. Uh, I would agree with Encryptus. I, they're not talking about, like, the item itself. Docs, I think they're saying the specifically the animation. And yes, uh while 8 Deluxe does have good animation, it could have way better. Because you know, developed for 10 years. Luna says Sonic Superstars greater than Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Uh I think I'd personally agree. Although, I'm not a big, I'm not a big 2D Sonic guy. But yeah, I'd say Superstars could be counted as better than Sonic 3 and Knuckles. It has playable, more playable characters. It has the Emerald powers, which are cool. I'd say it's fine. Based. Hi, Zoe. How you doing, Zozo? 
RC says, 2017 is still Nintendo's greatest Switch year, in my opinion. And the last time it felt like they were trying something creative with their games, which examples are Breath of the Wild, ARMS, Mario Rabbids, not technically a Nintendo game, Odyssey, etc. Uh, um, Pikmin 4. Uh, 2023 better. Moving on. 2023 based. Only because Pikmin 4 and nothing else. The end. But, yeah, I do agree. They, uh, I mean, like, that was the big year. They had to come out swinging. They had to come out completely. They had to not just ha be impressive, but they had to fucking blow everybody away. So, yeah, I would say that that was definitely purposeful. You got to have the Zelda and the Mario and the new shit. And they had us Splatoon 2 that year as well, I think. So, yeah, I agree. Base take. Another one from Encryptus. Uh, Wildberry is the best Pop-Tart flavor. Mmm. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We go on hot pop tarts or cold pop tarts. There's a fundamental difference. Pop tart. Well, look, there's three kinds of pop tarts. Three kinds of pop tarts. You got your hot ones, room temperature, and your frozen ones. Now, wild berry. One of the best room temperature pop tarts. One of the best hot pop tarts. A subpar frozen pop tart. So I don't know. We'd have to consider all three. I'll get back to you on Monday. But wild berry is a strong pop tart flavor. For example, from Serena, uh, the cookies and cream pop tart does cook the wild berry pop tart in the frozen department. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Creed. Also, if you liked Sonic Riders Creed, you should play Sonic Riders Free Riders. It's the best in the series. All right, Docs has. There it is. Doc says Ultra Kill is the single best FPS ever made. The healing system encourages you to actually interact with the game's mechanics. Unlike shooters, you have to hide under cover and auto regen. Or health packs gathered across the map. The movement is extremely fluid and enjoyable. A fact further compounded after you obtain the whiplash arm, which allows you for some of my favorite movement in the game. The secret levels range from hilarious to fun and engaging. The style may encourage you to usage of everything in your arsenal. Some of the secrets are really fun to find, and the game has a brilliant sense of humor. Shout out to Cancerous Rodent and Very Cancerous Rodent. It takes a genre I thoroughly despise and makes it incredible. Very base take. I will definitely agree that Ultra Kill is probably the best FPS you've ever played, Docs. But credit where credit is due. The health system in Ultra Kill does come from the Doom reboot. So, while Ultra Kill does, is incredible and one of the best examples of the genre, a lot of its ideas are borrowed, which is fine. As we all know, uh, mimicry is the highest form of flattery. And I can very easily say Ultra Kill is the best indie FPS I've ever played. I don't know if I give it the, the crown of best FPS I've ever played. I've played a lot of FPSs, <laughs> but base take, certainly. I do understand the take. And I'm glad you have found an FPS that you like in a genre that you really don't. <laughs> I do hope docs that from ultra kill you do explore more boomer shooters as i do think the boomer shooter genre is a genre you would like because boomer shooters 
are single player based and just more like structured. So maybe check out more boomer shooters, Docs. Try out the Doom series, try out Dusk, try out the Metroid Prime series for sure. All right, next one from Deco. It's not a moral contradiction to be okay with gore and violence in video games and be uncomfortable with nudity and sex in video games. I, I wouldn't say it's a moral contradiction. I think anyone who like complains about that or points that out, which I, I do. I think it's weird personally. <laughs> I think. It's less a statement on an individual person and more a statement like of society as a whole. <laughs> like I wouldn't judge Deco for it, but I do judge the place we live in. I do think it is weird that as no, I'm going to say as a society, <laughs> unironically i do think it's weird as a society we find gore and inhuman unnatural violence okay but the natural human form not okay like in a pg-13 movie it is a-okay to shoot someone in the head and perform unnatural impossible in the natural world violence on them but you can't show a woman's chest. You can't show a titty. Something everyone sees in their lifetime. That's kind of weird to me. I don't get that from an objective standpoint. Personally, don't get that. A lady's chest, the titties, not okay. Ripping someone in half in an unnatural way, totally fine. Depends on the intent, TBH. It does, but since we're doing a general statement, I'm keeping it general. Violence and gore doesn't involve human instinct unless it's designed to do so, but nudity often does. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> um, I would say the basis of your take in terms of it's not a moral contra contradiction. I agree with Deco. But uh, the actual like thing. I think you should not morally judge somebody being uncomfortable with sex and okay with nudity that is wrong so in that sense the base take but the greater idea behind the take the fact that people in general mainly in america are okay with violence and not okay with just like the human body is cringe so we'll break that one into, into parts So, we'll break that down. Dead says, Bulletstorm is overhated by the by the majority, me thinks. It's a, such a fun game. And what happened to enjoying the whimsy? Also, Duke Nukem DLC. Soiled my pants immediately. Um, I personally don't see Bulletstorm hate. I see, I don't know, I just think Bulletstorm isn't talked about anymore. Which, in a sense, is fair, because it did come out 10 years ago. But I do love Bulletstorm. I do wish there was a sequel. You've seen quite a bit. I have never seen anyone say anything bad about Bulletstorm, personally. The only... Uh... Leaning on... The only leaning on negative take I've seen from Bulletstorm is, like, indifference? 
the most negative thing I've seen about Bulletstorm is that they people don't know about it or just don't have a huge opinion on it. So wait, Deco, are you saying video games aren't art? Oh my god, I'm fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. That's not real. That's not real. <laughs> I like Bulletstorm, and I think your take is based to defend the game you like. So, based opinion. From Hoodie, Mario Odyssey is after all these years still hella underrated and not played enough. Nintendo should also hurry up with releasing Odyssey 2. The second part is a based opinion, but similar to Bulletstorm, I have really never seen anyone say anything negative about Odyssey. I have only seen Odyssey be like universally beloved. So, eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I would not say Odyssey's underrated. Fucking everyone loves Odyssey. I mean, the other thing, Deco, is just don't play the game. So, Deco, is your argument that these things shouldn't exist? Or what? Because they should they, they can be allowed to exist. If something just wants to be a porn game, then just let it be a porn game. If that's what they want to do, let them do it. <laughs> just don't buy it. Don't play it. Now, I don't know, Hoodie. I do agree that the Odyssey sequel should happen, but I would not say Odyssey is underrated. I, I see nothing but universal acclaim for Odyssey. Next one from Encryptus. People should really stop hating on things just because they are constantly talked about. Creators don't intend for that to happen, they just want to make something people can enjoy. So they don't deserve to have their product called everything but what its name is, just because people are indeed enjoying it. Yes, I agree. People should not hate on things because people love them. That being said, this is a base take and I agree with it. That being said, I do understand the feeling of hating something because everyone talks about it. I 100% understand that. I fucking hate it when I'm exposed to stuff constantly and I don't care about it. It does make me hate the thing unnecessarily, so I do get that. But there is a difference the thing between having the feeling of hating something and then like acting on those irrational feelings. So I do understand irrationally really disliking something because I'm exposed to it constantly and everyone I know won't shut the fuck up about it but i choose most of the time to not act on those feelings and not tell people or the creators that they are doing bad stuff so yeah you are correct in cryptus base take 60. Ultra Kill is better than Doom. Base take. I think everything, everything that is drawn from something should, like, improve upon it. Ultra Kill is definitely draws tons of inspiration from Doom. So, if you're drawing inspiration and making a, a making, like, your own version of it, you should make improvements. So I think it's only natural for a thing to take inspiration from something to improve upon it. So base take. Just don't force me into it. Exactly, Serena. 
Okay, Sniper. Star Wars is one of the most overrated series of all time. The fans are what make it, a, make it the big universe it is. And the added lore they add in the comics is not advertised enough for the common public to know. Of so, it's perceived smaller. Uh, uh based. Unbelievably based. Also, laws are overrated, rob a bank. Base take. Fuck Star Wars. No one hates Star Wars more than me, and I love Star Wars. Oh no, I know what you mean, 60. I got what you mean. It's a base take. Both based. Objectively. Mario, shiny mini or is a pain in the ass to shiny hunt. Base take. And Metronome is the funniest move in all of existence. Yeah. No, I get that. That's a base take. Soft take, but a base take. Sylvia. All right. Persona 4 Golden isn't that good. Fucking based. Everyone knows I hate Persona. You played Persona 2. Not completed it. Just played a decent bit of it. Persona 3 Portable. Persona 4 Golden. Persona 5 Royal. And out of all of them, Persona 4 Golden has just the least enjoyable to me. Everyone's, it's just my personal opinion. As always, in addition to me agreeing, personal opinions, and also taking the time to say it's your personal opinion, is always a based take. Because feeling a certain way is always based. And expounding on your feeling, feelings is also always based. It's based to feel the way you do. Don't let no one tell you otherwise. Nope, I agree, 60. Hot take, we should go back to giving all gamers wedgies and swirlies. Hell yeah. We have a hot take from Wera. Watch Dogs 2 should have been at least nominated for Game of the Year in 2017. Like, come on, who the fuck plays PUBG? Although Breath of the Wild did deserve it. Did Watch Dogs 2 come out in 2017? Hold up. When did that game come out? It was so long ago. So many years ago. I'll just say yes. Um, never played Watch Dogs, but sure. I also dislike PUBG, so I'm going to say it's a base take. Also, Ultra Kill is one of the best soundtracks in an FPF game, or even in video games in general. Along with it being made well, most tracks tell a really good story and portray the level boss as well. Holy fuck, go listen to The World Looks White, The World Looks Red, oh my god. <laughs> uh, definitely based. And finally, the last spicy take from Poyo. Open zone games are better than open world games. With an open zone game, you still have a large area for players to explore, but you less worries about how everything fits together in the world. With a limited space, you have more time to play around and put interesting structures and places everywhere. Most open world game maps are 90% empty space, with the occasional enemy and 10% actual interesting places. A way to spice up both genres is giving the player more things to do beyond just exploring. A great example of this is Future Redeemed DLC for Xenoblade 3. While you can just explore and see what you find, the game also gives you multiple options, tasks to complete. These can be things like killing every type of enemy, collecting every collectible, fighting mini bosses. These small objectives add up to make the world a bit more unique than just wandering around and hoping you find something interesting. Um, I understand the take. I do. But I do think there is something to an open world being seamless. 
like there's something to having the world be such a way where you can just walk to it and like you just get there and there's no like loading zone i understand what you mean though and i do agree uh clash pineapple hello hey luna uh i don't fully agree i wouldn't say they're overall better i think i think they do lend themselves to more like concrete and concentrated design where i think the fact that maps are 90 percent empty space and landscaped is kind of what people like about open world games the fact that you can just get lost But I will chalk this up to a personal opinion. And as we all know, personal opinions are always based. What is this stream about? Uh, people are putting hot takes in Discord. And I'm saying if the hot take is based or cringe, basically. Also, sadly, you're kind of right at the end. But you know what? Pineapple. Because you just got here. I'll do you a service. If you have a super spicy hot take, put it in the chat and I will tell you if that take is based or cringe. But to sum up, I would say mainly a, ba a base take Poyo. I think saying one's overall better than the other, eh, who's to say, but I do agree with your preference. But once again, it does kind of depend. Like, I think open zone worked better for like, I don't know, uh, like Monster Hunter, because it's just a small-ish environment. But then you have something like Elden Ring, where the open world is like half the appeal. Or like Scarlet and Violet, where the open world kind of gives brevity to it, despite it not working. I don't know. It uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a give and take. Personal opinion, we should suspend Will from the flagpole, flagpole by his underwear. Um, no. Pineapple, hot take. I wish DLC wasn't a thing. I prefer when game comes out in its full form. With games like Mario Odyssey, I'm glad they stayed the way they were. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to say that is based. If DLC wasn't a thing and people could not update their games once they came out, it would force people just to fucking finish their games. And you could have the counter argument of if that were the case, then games would never become fixed, kind of like the um, fucking cyberpunk game. It came out broken, and if it wasn't for DLC, it never would have been able to become fixed. But I say that if DLC didn't exist, cyberpunk would have been forced to have been delayed more and actually come out good. So I'm gonna go agree. I'm gonna agree with Pineapple. Odyssey would have benefited from DLC. Oh yeah, I think everyone would have liked some Odyssey DLC. I know I would have, but I think the Odyssey is a complete package. DLC and patches are two different thing things. Loud incorrect buzzer. The thing with 
the I, the thing I dislike about it is when there is DLC available, I always feel like I'm missing out if I just stay with the base game. No, I agree. I think that is a base take, Pineapple. Uh, yeah, go for it, Serena. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. Fuck it, as they say. Oh, look, I got a message, guys. <laughs> Here's my take for Booster Chorus Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. There should have been one cup for just being tour and not like 16 tour courses. Uh, yeah, I can agree. I can agree. I can agree. I can agree. I think everyone would have liked more actual Mario Kart stages and tour stages. But I think we also have to look that the tour was like for for considering what tour was, which was like eight more cups. No, not even that. It was like what? Almost doubling the courses for $20. Granted, they could have done $30 and made put like more stuff into it or more like original courses. But I think for what it was, I think we got a lot out of, out of the uh, tour DLC or the uh, booster course. Literally doubling the courses. Yeah, for 20 bucks, that's really not bad. It's hard to complain when they do that for 20 bucks. Remember when Fire Emblem engaged and announced DLC before the game was even out? Yeah, that's that's kind of fucked up. I agree. I agree. It would be interesting if DLC didn't exist. I would kind of. I, I don't know. Here's here's the thing, though. I think even if DLC didn't exist, Pineapple, this is like the one counter I can think to your take. I think shitty horrible companies would always find some other way to fuck us <laughs> so i think they'll always find a way <laughs> to fuck you over they'll like they'll just release a different version or something but in general i do agree i think both are good but uh i think that is it for me today and remember we do the based versus cringe every other Thursday. So the next one will be uh, the 21st. Here's the discord if the thing wants to work or not, whatever. But yeah, I'm going to go, but I will send you guys somewhere. Let's go see. Let's go see Tiger. They're doing Pokemon Unite. Everyone hates that game, so it makes sense. <laughs> I appreciate you hanging out, Pineapple. It was nice to meet you. All right, guys. I'll see you like... Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know. Later. I love you.